all on Zen. At high percent, it's all on PK Chris. Yeah, I think a majority of it has to do with how Zen deals with PK Chris at the ledge. I think Zen has plenty of potential to take the set because I, from what I've been watching, he understands how to play around the style that would be a Ness archetype. I haven't seen him play any of the Nesses today. We got both PK Chris and Debo on each side of Loser's Quarters. But one of the things PK Chris does as like a signature thing to PK Chris is he uses uh, PK Flash on the way back up a lot. It's a counter edge guard tool. So if Zen can't figure out how to deal with that and how PK Chris reverse edge guards a lot, he's going to have a lot of issues. Now, speaking of ways to deal with things, back air. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> back, air, just... back air is a straight up one win. All right, so remember I said I was going to get goofy? Now it's Pikachu. Back air is uh... a one win button. <laughs> it leads to everything. You get dragon down moves. Goofy. You're just spitting, man. <laughs> I, this character drives me absolutely bad shit insane. So, good oh, job. Oh, wait, you can say it, but I can't. What's this? I'm this grown. This That's why, man. <laughs> also, fair, bro. He is it, going to get stage spiked right there off towards the beat. Yep, he is going to get him back. And Zen wants that dash grab, but isn't going to be able to find it. So PK Chris kind of getting away unpunished with one of the riskiest recoveries I've seen all night. Yeah, I'm, and I'm really like the way Zen's approaching this because you even at this like percent window, right? You need to wait for Ness to commit first because if Ness commits first, you get out of shield option punishes like so. If you constantly try to box with Ness, see that's that neutral B I was talking about there a second ago. And, but if you constantly try to box with Ness, you're going to get caught by short hop aerials all the time. And now Zen already adjusting, realizing the PK flash would happen again and starts to go for Thunder Jolt. That's how you counter that. And that, I, I got to give a lot of credit to Zen for his ability to think on the fly. Like, he gets hit by it once, immediately snaps. There's the adjustment. It's not like he's got to hit, get hit by it like some players like two or three or four times before it finally, like, clicks with him that, oh, this is a bad idea. But speaking of bad ideas, approaching Ness at high percent. So you're just going to get grabbed, and you're just going to get yeeted into the blast zone like we saw right there. That's what we're talking about. Once it gets to that point when you're both at, like, being at 120 plus for Pikachu is actually bad. Death because sentence. You, yeah. you really want to kill, like, sub 100 off stage. When you're forced to challenge Ness, look at how stressful this is. Everything you do is no longer a combo. So you need to get a straight hit aerial or you need to get a raw F smash or something because you, you that's, that's all you got. You, Hey, that's Good. that's exactly what I said at the very like before the set began. Yep. It's it's at hyper sense the switch flips and Pika becomes a bad character in this matchup. Exactly, it's so actually we're... kind of insane. Like he has to finally fish and find that dash attack at over 150. Finally taking PK Chris out. Sure, he didn't get too much extra credit, but he still like he still hasn't taken a hit. And he's already got Zen up to 72. percent Like he's not in a great position. I think the big thing when you get higher up in skill sets is maximizing, like, even if you can't maybe maximize the damage at a second stock, minimizing the amount you take is also necessary, too. So, like, if you're sitting there behaving in a manner where you're constantly trying to force extra damage, then you're going to end up giving up a stock for free. PK Chris was able to slowly put damage on, even though it may not have been as much as he wanted to. It's still a little bit better since uh, he was able to keep the commitment down and not let Zen get too comfortable. One oh, of the, the things that I, well, good. Okay, that was interesting follow-up. As a caster, one of the things that I harp on the most, and anyone who's watched my commentary can tell you this extra credit all day long, because it's, in my opinion, one of the most important concepts in this game is getting, building up as much, like, bonus track as you can to outrun your opponent while you have like a zero risk situation because what are they going to do kill you okay it the changes the tempo even. of the match afterwards because if you get somebody uh, if you're a full stock up and all of a sudden the other person is at 100 off the next stock they can't challenge you recklessly at low percent to try and force themselves to get a lead oh i like that after realizing I really that, like he that wasn't going to be able to like catch himself on a tech chase to try to go for a roll read <laughs> there you go though that's how you do it you get them off stage you hunt down that jump and you take them out that's, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier, Ajax. That's, I think that's like the third time we've said that because the two of us, you know, we're just so smart. We knew exactly <laughs> what was going to happen in this it's match. Before it even did. But this is exactly what PK Chris needs to be doing. He needs to be taking out Zen before he gets the option to start these big combos. And he's got him all the way up to 81%. We've seen how long this little psychic child's going to be living for. If yeah, and Zen I actually, can, can't like get something started here soon. It's gonna spell doom for him game one. I actually like now what PK Chris is doing. This is where people like to say, "Oh, Ness is fighting ghosts. He's option. He's doing option coverage. He's putting yeah. out a lot of safe aerials to to slow down and possibly get some free trade damage because okay. everything for you is good trade damage." And that was an excellent answer to get that side magnet, bring it back down to 32 because now you're getting. 
back air, you're getting to get a dive roll back air. You're possibly in there with bad DI at ledge or a back throw. And it's every single bit on Zen to play perfectly now to not die. And the, the other big thing is like, sure, call it mashing every day of the week all you want. Maybe it is mashing, but A, it's working, man. And if it's working, why would they stop doing it? Like you're throwing out hitboxes and that's one of the best things to do against a super... What, what move was that? That was, was that up tilt? Uh, I'm looking back at the stream to see where it looked. I think it might have been up smash. Oh, no, no, no. no it was, um, yeah, that was up tilt, I think. That was, what? That was weird. Okay. <laughs> that, like, I we didn't even get to see the hit, yeah. We didn't even get to see the hitbox fully manifest because they actually traded. But it, uh, it just, you know, it killed him. And, but what I was saying is that, like, in, in those situations, mash your brains out, dude. Because there, it, there's no, no, like, downside to it. One of those stray hits is eventually going to find its mark and that wins you the game. Meanwhile, your opponent has to get so much damage on you before they even start to thinking about think about killing you. It's all about changing the win condition for Zen because if Zen is chilling at 70, it's a lot easier to be able to box. But if Zen is chilling at 100 plus, even if you're climbing with them, you get back to the point where Ness has the easier time to close the game out by comparison. So you've got to do that. Also, just taking a peek at chat really quick. Um, this, this is a big reason why we're uh, like heavily discussing this matchup the way we're talking about it is because this one is easily one of the most contested even to losing matchups for Pikachus because of what you're seeing. Psy Magnet shuts down uh, the neutral beast. That's why we're seeing very little out of Zen. He can't afford to risk it. Uh, that, that, see, speaking of which, right off the start. Uh, <laughs> it, it, even, even without the, the neutral beast, we also saw that downbeat. We saw that thunder get absorbed. Yeah, I didn't even that get the finish. That gave PK about Chris like things, 20%. Like, but yeah, he, you get that. You get that off of that. You get aerials that beat out characters. Oh, here we go. He's gonna look for a low recovery try. Oh my God, I was waiting for the setup. Just that's a PK Chris special right there. He loves setting it up to where he forces you to think you're gonna get hit by a tech at the ledge, and then you buffer roll on you and you get destroyed by PK Thunder too. Dude, it's the loop de loops that bait you into trying to go for that roll off stage, and it never works out well for those players. He goes for mm -hmm. the thunder there off stage, and he's putting like he's even managing to put so much pressure on Zen while not even being on the stage that's that was one, one of the most the first impressive things, I said things in this matchup yeah exactly what was one of the first things i said before the set it's started that, right it's that, it's zen, that neutral that yep zen has to be able to beat the neutral b off stage because if he does it it's a free recovery for the most part for pk chris and now in this situation it's it's very very tough for uh for zen to be able to do anything because there's such a big percent difference so the next like big hit that pk chris goes for probably gonna kill like we just see right there he gets the kill and now he's got a almost a full stock lead like ness is very capable of closing this percent difference even more and making this just absolutely like lapped in percents yeah this is where things get rough too because zen zen looks really good when the game is even when, when zen can actually like be willing to box and call out jumps get big damage that's a good call out right there he could possibly get an early stock here to shut all this down that's the jump if he's gonna follow him off stage there's the delay he's gonna be forced to be get done oh what do you oh, i like the idea for a second but he just missed it oh never mind pk chris gave it up to him okay never mind <laughs> Now he's going for these PK Thunders, dude. He he wants that PK Thunder too. He wants that disrespect hit. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. I can't believe how hard Zen worked to get all that. That PK Chris, like, you know what? I actually think that was great. You got it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give it to you. This <laughs> guy, he earned it. He earned it. It's his. Better man than me giving a free stock to Pikachu. But Zen and but <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> See here, this is what I'll talk about with Zen, right? Now that it's even percent, look how confident he is at approaching. He, he recognizes I'm gonna call out your jumps, I'm gonna punish them consistently, and he's now brought it back to even. Zen plays really good at low percents. The key thing is if he can get early stocks, because when he gets the high percents, that's where PK Chris has been running with it. He's looking to bring it to that exact same situation again. He's going for these back airs. He's going for these landing fairs. He's going for these nares. And he's coming off stage with these same things that we discussed earlier. He wants that up air off the ledge. But he's actually, like, Zed has been doing a much better job than he was game one of playing around it. He's, oh, but he's not going to get, he's not going to get away from that. 
Yeah, no dip, run, get out of there. If you if you're run. getting if you're getting pushed back by Pikachu, that's the time to hit the evacuation button. Eject those Zeno, cuz I'm out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that oh no, he's gonna get out of it. No down smash to follow through, but like like you were saying, that's the that's the shit. Get me out of here, bro. Yeah, dip fast and in a hurry. And now Zen is trying to look for a throw to get himself stage positioning. I like the down tilt. And also, oh, that was oh, almost so no. good. That was almost so good. He used the down tilt and waited for the reaction out of PK Chris to put some pressure on, but PK Chris held his ground too and just ended up catching back throw. And now he is just going to get paired out of shield. Sure, PK. Oh my god, how did he get hit by that? How did he hit Ajax? Answer me. Answer Some me. Hey, look, man, sometimes you just go deer in the headlights and you just go ahead and catch a PK Thunder too. Oh, that was a little <laughs> bit. Um, Speaking of deer in the headlights, he goes right into it. He's yet still somehow alive and he is going to be able to make it back to stage. But, like, that was just them trading big old hitboxes there. Hey, so, look, sometimes uh, you gotta get unorthodox and you just gotta do it. Like, you just throw out, throw out a high recovery PK Thunder. And, yeah, it's not the safest thing in the world, but it might catch somebody off guard. And we're looking at the same exact situation as last time. F-Tilt's gonna get good stage positioning. Probably gonna follow him at the ledge with down tilt. Um, excuse me, down smash. Doesn't get anything else out of it, but falling up there and continuing this pressure. Oh, that was almost so good. He baited that. He baited a swing out of disadvantage so well, but unfortunately missed it. Whoa! That was actually so smart from Zen. I thought he was, I thought Zen was dead. I thought the game was over because I thought mm -hmm. Zen burnt his double jump and was just in special fall because I was paying more attention to how PK Chris was going down. And all of a sudden, like that back air came out of nowhere and that killed. That was a yeah. beautiful play from him off stage. And now he's brought this to last stock. I didn't think that, look, it's not very rare. You see a Pikachu back air actually kill straight up. So that was very huge for Zen there. And Zen is dead. He's dead. Um, he's dead. <laughs> And I was Zen gonna, I was dead. gonna say, I was gonna say something, but uh, I got nothing else to say. So, PK Chris is playing this matchup perfectly. He, he's he's playing it exactly how you need to do it. And for people who question like why this matchup is a bit of a struggle for Pikachu, it, you're seeing it all play out here. The way that Pikachu has to win is forcing offstage low recovery gim uh, like gimps and good ledge trap play. If you don't, then you have to deal with everything else in your toolkit basically being beat out by Ness and it makes it actually annoying. It's like we said, it's it's very hotly contested, but at least in my opinion, it's one of Pika's very, very few losing matchups alongside. I, I was gonna say I'm one of I've, I'm of the I'm definitely of the camp where it's minus one in my view. That, uh, yeah, I agree. It, I don't it, think it, Pika has any minus twos, to be honest with you. No, <laughs> Pikachu has no minus twos. Pikachu's nah, the best I character in the game, and I'll his, fight that. <laughs> his, I don't think he's best character in the game. I think he's top I, two, though. I, 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 think, I, he's I, I it, think he's tied for best. He's definitely top two, but I have many reasons as to why he's the best character in the game. Uh, slightly, Only slightly over Joker. But... Okay, okay. So you do agree that Joker's the other one. So we're, oh, no, we're it's, like, what, we're, it's 100%. We're hands, we're shaking hands right It's 100% Joker that's uh, tied for number two. And we still haven't even seen everybody else else offline uh, uh here comes also, the switch to wolf yeah there so we are this is this is something we've seen before um and it, it showed up a few times throughout the bracket today as well i agree with this the pikachu as good as it is it just couldn't close out the match uh against the nest and i think that the the straight the, just the straight up kill potential on wolf and the out of shield options are going to be significantly better fighting pk chris no, uh, who is just staring him out. absolutely so you, some like sometimes counter like some people call it counter i've literally seen people call players cowards for counter picking in bad matchups that's stupid it's a game with 80 characters pick a different one if something isn't working right yeah, facts. and Look, that's exactly what zen's doing right here he's he's already already you know off to a pretty good start 38 percent 53 63 is nothing to sneeze Wait, at which which poll that i just missed here i didn't mean to, to break off of that but the, well, i don't even know what was in contention against which Steve's move is better <laughs> overall steve's minecart or pika's tj oh, it's absolutely oh, Minecart, get out of here. 100 percent minecart. Minecart is in here. I, I, I'm starting to think minecart might be a contender for best move in the game. Like, <laughs> but we'll talk about that more afterwards. Uh, oh, good. That was a good stall. That was a very good stall. That, that, that was, was, was ready to eat all of your life. All, all nine of your cat lives, cat jam. Sorry, I literally read cat jam in the chat. It, it altered what I was about to say on commentary. Chat, you're too powerful. Hey, look, man, after all these years, eventually all this Animal Crossing music became bangers for everybody, so 
<laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if it's Stockholm syndrome or if we just straight up think they're actual bangers. But dude, if you disrespect my my king KK slider, I got no, KK, no, KK slider is different. KK slider is different. That man is the G. Oh, and that is a good up air following up. Oh, okay, okay. Both of us like just had a numb flashback right there, thinking that PK Chris was about to end this man's whole career with a whole loop de loop at like Disneyland or something. But he managed to body block the PK Thunder, survive through it now he's at 129 percent he's approaching the threshold of full rage and wolf with full rage is a really scary character man facts wolf in general is just so wolf is one of the best overall around characters like there's two top tiers if you ever want to learn how to really play a top tier in this game Palo and wolf they simplify the game in specific ways wolf really just changes the way you control the pace of the match he has good straight kill power he has great out of shield options and he's really good at the ledge he teaches you good ledge trapping you can see after how how much he was struggling to like box with PK Chris head up before with Wolf it's like okay I will throw out lasers on occasion and if you miss you take 10% but if you decide to approach too much I'm just gonna out beat you with hitboxes that up there finally finds the damage but look how much damage Zen has right now 2% extra credit on the board 112 now with these nares and an entire stock now with that bear wolf bear especially on town and city is a whole war crime man it does so much <laughs> it cooks you dinner it does the dishes it tucks you in at night it even kisses you on the forehead man there's nothing that this move cannot do I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm dead, bro. Like, I don't want to wash no dishes, but <laughs> I don't want to do none of that shit. All right, but here we go. Uh, catching all these, like, now you see PK Chris starting to throw out a lot of optic coverage aerials. He's trying to slow down Zen because Zen has really figured out how to deal with this match. In the next one, I think you're going to be seeing PK Chris stay in Zen's face significantly more. He's not going to be swinging sort of, like, in an aerial space trying to cover movement. He's going to pressure Zen. That's if we get to that next game because okay. that was a very solid forward smash that all of a sudden got this to an even game. That's uh, an interesting pick from PK Chris. Like, I, I don't even know what oh. option was in his head that he was trying to cover, but it worked out to perfection. He's going to take the stock with that nasty angle that F-Smash sent him at while he was airborne. And now PK Chris, like, he has the potential to bring this back. We saw that F-Smash charge come out there, Ajax, mm -hmm. but he did manage to cancel it out with that fair hitbox. He's still living to see another day, and he's he's bringing this back. He's dragging victory from Jaws of defeat. Yeah, Zen's, uh, Zen's fan club is really hurting right now. There's a lot of people in chat room for Zen to see move forward. I want to see more matches. I really like the adjustments Zen has made. But PK Chris is just, uh, just really, it seems like PK Chris understands when he's behind. They kind of pressure Zen in a way where he's not comfortable. But that is that. That is, should be Zen's game. Oh, oh, he yeah, got the yeah, 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 right there. Yeah, okay. Even if he made it back, Zen could just keep throwing out as many smash attacks at the ledge with down smash as possible. You can just clip him. He already, he, he was going for a re-grab. He was screwed. So Zen gets himself on the board. I like a lot of the differences there. What what was the key things that you saw out of Zen that really made a big difference in that, uh, that game three? I think the, the biggest thing that I noticed was that he was actually able to push advantage state during that mm -hmm. game, right? Like, the, the biggest thing that he was having a lot of trouble with as Pika was he was only getting those stray hits. And sure, Pikachu has quite a bit of stray hit kill power. Like, he can kill you off of those, those stray back airs at the ledge. He can kill you off of those stray fares. He wasn't really building up too much percent to be able to make that possible. What really made the difference once the wolf came out was he was getting like 50, 60, 70 percent off one single interaction, just mm -hmm. pushing the advantage state from from point A to point B, and point B was almost always the blast zone. It was a great game and a great adjustment by Zen. True enough. Also, that's Cap Chat. Palu's still good. That grab is not a tether grab anymore, but it's that character is still really okay. good. Hey, okay, Jack, <laughs> I'm about to make a lot of people mad. Here's my top five: Pika, Joker, Palu, Peach wolf that is my top five you think wolf's wolf, top five wolf can be our i said wolf yeah i'm saying you think wolf's top five i think he can be argued i uh, i think i think he's arguable I, I think i'm he, still look i don't think people seem to understand how busted shulk is and not enough people play him i think uh, shulk's top 10 but his meta hasn't pushed far enough for me to, like I, and look I, I look at things from I, I i take a lot of theory craft and i look at what the okay, if you're I, talking I look, theory craft no, no, not, not, I'm, saying not, I'm saying not, not, I'm saying I'm not just theory craft though, not just theory. I take a lot of results from when I watch specific matchups. And Shulk is disgusting! 
king. But he's so hard to play that most people don't want to do that because they want to hold forward and press buttons. But we're going to talk about that after. Yeah, but I'm going to be real with you. If you're talking theory crafting, if you're talking like the possibilities beyond like what humans can do or humans that aren't named to buzz in, in essence, Rosa is top one. Well, that's it, that's a take that a lot of people aren't ready for. But if you've seen some of the shit DeBuzz has done in the lab, oh, for sure, sure it's disgusting. Well, 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 if there, well, you know, after this match, actually, I, I, I wanna I wanna have that discussion because like okay, theory crafting itself that, that definitely changes a lot about characters. But if you combine both, Sh uh, Shulk needs to be up there. But in Shulk's, here, Shulk's in my top ten. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that. Like, I don't disagree with you too hard. Yeah, if people aren't putting Shulk in top ten, then you, I, I'm gonna <laughs> look. If I can, <laughs> if I can say something as somebody who was like. Nico's good friend. I watched that man go from working at Walmart to all of a sudden he runs SoCal's brackets for money. I'm not kidding. This man used to work at Walmart and then he started winning with Shulk and all of a sudden he's he's literally making enough money to pay his rent. That's all I'm saying. The Shulk is ridiculously busted. I brought the Vance out of the production well, booth it. with my hot takes, bro. I'm, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna bring Vance back in once this is over. We're sick, right? unfortunately, <laughs> we got we, I, I got a little we stat have, check. So this we match is we currently saw, we saw an insane up smash from PK Chris. You heard me yelling like in the background behind mm -hmm. Vance uh, talking about that up smash there. PK Chris doing not enough. Gonna get caught by that down smash there. Facts. Now one of the things that we were talking uh, that that was mentioning in the last match, right? PK Chris was getting pressured by trying to anticipate movement, and that's not how you beat Wolf. Wolf, uh, Wolf will outbeat you if you're playing super passive, swinging, waiting for a reaction first. You have to pressure Wolf. You need to make the Wolf prove to you that they can actually swing at you and be good, using good up tilts and such good anti -airs. PK Chris is actually pressuring Zen this time on the smaller stage, and look how much of a difference this has made so far. It's relatively even, but he's still in a very uncomfortable position, which is going to be a yeet off the stage. Chris capitalizing, like you said, on some of the weaker aspects of gameplay here, but I also, I want to chalk like some of the- Down air! Oh, damn it! It was so close! <laughs> you, you, me, and the entirety of chat saw that coming. That was three down smashes in a row, by the way. One of them finally did manage to connect. But uh, we gotta we gotta take a moment to, to mention the fact that he almost hit that down air and Zen just barely survived it and then he immediately got back on the stage and started down smashing. Yeah, he would like honestly the, the, when you're at the ledge like that, you wanna catch those down smashes. Even if it looks like it's mashing per se, right? You're covering a potential kill option too for it. You wanna destroy them. Good oh, tech no. is Oh, that was so close to another one. PK Chris is looking super comfortable now. He's playing at the ledge and he's playing dead with one last stock. So never mind. <laughs> One last stock, but one of these characters is at 93, and one of these characters also has a throw that kills about now, and it's not the character who's at 93. Ness has the capability to absolutely end this game, end this set right here and now. All he needs is one grab at the ledge. That's gonna be, it's gonna have to be Zen playing around that win condition. He's gotta stay away from PK Chris at the ledge, or at least stay away from PK Chris's shield at the ledge. Oh, uh oh, okay. Suns aren't changing the air. You can see, you can see it, and it there is. There he is. And it, oh, no, he's not dead yet. That back air didn't do it just yet. And yeah. that's unfortunate. Uh -oh. Buffer, buffering system sucks. Great job from covering with the PK Thunder. Uh, I, I think it was anticipating attack possibly there, but he caught him. Zen really was looking good at the end there. He was really starting to recognize.